<laughs> Nothing. I just okay, turned. Cool, I just cool, turned cool, the mic cool. on. <laughs> there we go. Hello. Hello, hello, chat. We were uh, bragging about how autistic we were. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> me at work. Also, me watching Heat and Stream conclusion. I'll let you decide whether it's worth it or not. I hope it is. Goodness. It's Thursday already. Yeah. So, okay. So I, I did say that these would be on Thursdays, but uh, I wanted our dear Mortis to join us. And today was the only available day this week he was off of work. <laughs> yeah. I'm special like that. Oh, I can't take I'm a <laughs> It is Thursday, my dudes. Yeah. It's Thursday, my dudes. Uh... <laughs> oh, goodness. So oh, well. you, uh, you can do my at and the title if you'd like. Yeah, I didn't know that until now. I'll, I'll do that. I'll append that. Hang on. August. Extra interview stream. Well, today's gonna. This is gonna be the interview stream this week. Next week, I'll, I'll tell you preemptively, because next week is going to be Brooke! <gasps> Brooke! We stand Brooke in this household. Brooke we is amazing. Do. Uh-oh. There you are. I think it is Mongus this gamer. Yeah! I did it! Yay! It's me! I had to use my Eldritch powers, and I did it. All we got is really is a cult with a franchise. Thank you for the resub, Wandering. My ass is not being beating the sleepy allegations, but I have joined a new D&D campaign and we're doing session zero this Thursday. <gasps> yeah, I'm excited. Nice. I hope you have fun. So, Mortis. Yes, hello, hi. Uh, would you like to introduce yourself to the chat who might not have met you before? Uh, yes, I would love to. Uh, hi, hello, my name is Mortimer Wolf, but you can call me Mortis. Um, I am your friendly neighborhood werewolf with your dad's music taste. Um, I'm a variety streamer, I am also a trans streamer, so... Um, I am also very fucking autistic. <laughs> uh, which is why I'm here! So for, uh, for context... <laughs> The two of us now have this bit because so when so we we first met in person at Momocon uh, last mm. time, right? And we uh, we were sitting in the airport for like two hours next to our bags. And at one point we just started doing that fucking uh, the TikTok ah. audio, the ah, oi, oi, ah, oh, oh, ah, oi. like for like. Oh a good two minutes straight, and then there was just a pause, and Mortis just looks at me and goes, God, we're fucking autistic. Because we are. Uh, also, Hateful, yes, I love Queen, and I do occasionally listen to ACDC. I like Queen. I love Queen. I saw them in concert. It was really good. Fucking lucky. It was great. I had a I had a great time. Uh, fucking oh, God, I what's the you. what's the guitarist's name? I can't think of it off the top Fuck. of my head. The one who's the he's the one who's the astrophysicist. Um. Uh. Oh God, I don't know. Yeah, I can't think of his name. But I remember during the second half of the show, uh, he he came out in a Minnesota Wilds jersey because we saw him at the the Staples Center, I think, in St. Paul, and uh. <laughs> The crowd went fucking bonkers. <laughs> I also saw Adam Lambert come out in uh, a full, a two-piece lame, pink lame suit, covered in rhinestones with a huge piece of rose embroidery on the back. And he walked out, he did, um, I think that was his outfit for Killer Queen. And mm -hmm. then he followed it up immediately by going, I think this is the gayest outfit any of you have ever seen. And I was like, damn, you sure are right, Adam. <laughs> Good for him. Good for him. Uh, sorry, I've gotten a bit, I've gone a bit quiet. Um, I'm still fucking... <laughs> <laughs> Your taxes can wait! I just want to make 
sure they're done right. <laughs> Listen, I may look like a punk, but I'm a pussy. <laughs> he is afraid of the of, of the neo I'm, government I'm... IRS, the neo IRS. <laughs> I am not fucking with the IRS. Listen, there are some things that I will and will not fuck with. The IRS is not one of them. <laughs> okay. But I think I think I finished it. I think we're okay. good. So uh, I'll, okay. I'll start with the same like uh, preemptive questions. Uh, so mm. are you formally diagnosed? I am not formally diagnosed. No. No. So then how did you discover that you were, that you possessed the tism? Um, so, well, okay. It was kind of a gradual thing, like, so I kind of started learning about it, oof, I think, 2015 was when I went full Tumblr baddie, I think. Ooh, yeah, um, as, and, as, did, yeah. as did so many of us. <laughs> oh yeah, god. Uh, <laughs> so, um, from, well, no, I feel like, hold on. I'm so bad with numbers. I'm so sorry. Me too, um, baby. <laughs> um. So. No, I think. I didn't really come to terms with the fact that I was autistic until like, recently, like, past three years recently, right? Mm -hmm. Um. But I always knew that I had like, ADD, ADHD. You mm -hmm. know. Um, just because of the type of struggles that I was having in school and, you know, uh, we had a culinary teacher who was obsessed with, like, I'm not going to say political shite, but, like, um, he had very strong opinions about, like, oh, uh, the chemicals and foods are making the frogs gay, you know? <laughs> uh, except it was the chemicals and food are making the kids autistic. <laughs> So he would show a lot of, like, food videos, and then he would link it up to, like, uh, <laughs> symptoms of, like, ADD, ADHD, autism, and things like that. Um, Public schools really are nice wild. Guys, <laughs> enough. Oh, fucking. It was, listen, it was an unusual school, unusual fucking teacher. He did get fired eventually. Um... I saw defeat Neo TurboTax in the in the fucking chat. <laughs> <laughs> I did it. I won. But um no, so I was kind of familiar with like what my symptoms were as well as like what I was being told kind of symptoms were from not... my crazy fucking teacher. So you were not formally um, diagnosed, you were casually diagnosed. <laughs> I was very casually diagnosed by a culinary teacher. Who is also a coach. Uh, welcome to uh, the American Public School System. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Fun fact about the school that I went to. Uh, the street it was on was called Trans World. So fucking the stars have a line. It's true. Um, but no, yeah. So from there, I kind of just, you know, I was aware of what I was, I had the classic issues in school. Um, and then recently, you know, I've just started coming to terms with the fact that, oh no, wait, I am autistic. So my my second question, because it's going to lead into a combination of uh, Pizza Hut and Taco Bell here, is um, mm -hmm. uh, how, how long have you identified as being trans? Uh, Okay. God, these fucking numbers. So, I hit my homestuck phase in 2011. <laughs> right? No. No, it was 2010. I've never. No, that's it. That's it. That's all I. <laughs> no, because I was. No, no, no. Because I wasn't the one that did it. Um, I just. Was... I'm so sorry. There's just. <laughs> there's nothing that's quite like. When did you discover you were trans? Well, I hit my homestuck phase in 2011. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that's it. There, there we go. Well, I mean, I mean. Okay. So here's the thing. I've always, like, okay. Oh my fucking god. 
<laughs> I always knew that there was something not wrong, but off about me in relation to like the other people that I was around at school and stuff, right? Um, it's just mm -hmm. I didn't have a name for it. I just thought, oh, I'm like a tomboy. <laughs> Mm -hmm. or something because that's what like my parents would ask me and shit as well um <laughs> wondering so then, i keep seeing people say shit like this what the fuck is in that comic <laughs> um good question i never actually read it i just participated in the fandom imagine what would have happened uh, it's so many worse things i think <laughs> um imagine you'd have you'd have cycled all the way back around yeah, uh, <laughs> um, but, so, okay, I had kind of a weird phase, 2011, 2012, 2013, uh, and then I remember, so this was back when I still had uh, some modicum of faith, I remember asking my parents, uh, was I meant to be born a boy, or is this, is this, like, correct, it, was this God's plan, um, and yeah, of course, uh, the response you'd expect from that is the classic uh, fundy evangelical response you get from that. Mm -hmm. um, typically, typically. Yeah. Uh, and then one day, uh, I, so I was playing Minecraft with a friend, and this friend explained to me, "Oh yeah, no, I'm, I'm trans. I go by he him pronouns." I was like, "Hmm. Okay, I remember this is like eighth grade." Um, and then one day I just decided, you know what? Uh, haha, I've been lying to you all. I go by he him pronouns. He he hoo hoo. And ever since then, I've been like, but yeah, this is it. <laughs> so what you're, so what you're telling me, <laughs> what, 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 so you were not, you were not a, a man pretending to be a girl on the internet. Uh, you were an AFAB pretending to be a man pretending to be a girl on the internet. Uh, for a while, yeah. <laughs> and then I just said, D -d fuck it. No more. You know what? I love that. I love <laughs> I, I love that that's your story. Um, and so, and the reason why I, like, lied about because this was a very specific thing that I would tell people as well. Um, I, like, I would say, oh, you know, I know how I sound. Uh, I am just a guy with a vocal condition because I didn't want to experience transphobia. Mm. And surprisingly enough, it worked most of the time. <laughs> I, oh my god. I have I a fucking like, medical oh, disorder, shit. you piece of shit. <laughs> it's so good. That's the weirdest part about it all. It worked. Like, there was some question of, like, oh, haha, you sound weird. But it was always like, oh, no, that's Mortis. That's that's a dude. Mm hmm And it it was weirdly reassuring, but, um, yeah, you know. It was, you, you told me, like, when we, like, when we first started talking, like, mm. you were like, oh, he, him pronouns. And I was like, oh, cool. And I just accepted it as is the way. Uh, mm -hmm. And then we spoke for the first time, and my and every fiber of me went trans. Got it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah it happens. It happens. Yeah. It happens more often than you think with me. Where I'll meet somebody like over text chat, and they'll tell me like, "Oh, I'm a guy," and I'll be like, "Okay, cool." And like, I just won't question it because like, why the fuck would I? And then I'll mm. speak to them over like Discord or something, and I'm like. Oh, okay. I see the score now. <laughs> yeah. Um. So my uh my my other question. This is something I've I've always kind of wanted to ask you. Uh, mm -hmm. do you how do you feel uh or do you feel that um being neurodivergent has affected your like the way that you perceive your gender? Um. Cause like I've heard a couple of people, uh, a couple of neurospicy individuals, such as myself, because uh, mm -hmm. as a non-binary person, I feel like my autism does actually play a little bit of a part. Yeah, I think. 
I don't know. I don't really think it did. Only because, like, again, I, it's, it wasn't until, like, 2020 that I started accepting the fact that I am autistic, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so I don't really think it did, but also that's something that probably down the line I'm going to think about for the next 15 <laughs> years and then realize, oh my god, Pepe Sylvia, the dots have connected. Because, like, it was it was one of those things where because, like, for example, like, because I I perceive things like, like, what about a person's important differently? Mm -hmm. Um, I never, it's why, like, it took me so long. Uh, mm -hmm. cause, cause, like, legitimately, like, it was not a bit when you and you and were sitting down and telling me, like, they're like, you know... They're like, say that again? And I would be like, yeah. And then I'd repeat it. And you guys would go, that's not a thing that cis women say, Heaton. And I'm like, <laughs> what? And they'd be like, no, yeah. that's a trans thing. And I'm like, it is? <laughs> <laughs> I thought everybody was like that. It's like, yeah, I no, thought... I I thought most people didn't care. I thought most... I People like give a shit about shit like that? And they're like, yeah, they do. <laughs> I'm like, oh. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to say, so I, so I feel like stuff like that, because like, because I don't perceive like the, I guess I never gave a shit about like the societal or like the, the social like gender cues or like societal like gender shit. Like, I just never, I just never give a fuck about it. And, like, it just didn't interest me, and I didn't care how I was perceived on that spectrum ever. So I just was like, mm -hmm. ah, I mean, I don't know. I think that a lot of this, like, I think a lot of, like, I've said before that being autistic has made the weird behavior that I've had my whole life of, like, I really don't give a fuck about, like, most of the, like, social niceties that you have to do, because it all feels kind of artificial, yeah. right? So like yeah, so I see what you mean. I think part of that could be autism. I think another part of it could be like a difference in upbringing. Up upbringing, because I so I was raised very very like religious. Like when I was a kid, I was in it, you know. Mm -hmm. And even now, those like <laughs> they matter to me less, but. I'm still very aware of, like, the societal norm, especially when it comes to gender and such. Mm -hmm. um, and that's still something that I'm trying to unlearn. But I do think that's, like... I do think that's a difference of, like, upbringing and stuff. Yeah, I would, I would say so as well. Because, again, I was raised in a household where a lot of that shit was not enforced. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Like, one of, I remember one of the big things, one of the big developmental things for me was when, uh, when I'd watch, like, sitcoms as a kid, and mm -hmm. the, the mother and the father have the, like, well, she, she told me not to go drinking with the, bo or she told me she wouldn't care if, if I go drinking with the boys, but, which means she does care, Right? Which which means uh -huh. like X Y Z. I I kept looking at my parents and I'm like, that's dumb. Like, why wouldn't you? I was like, people don't really do that. I'm like, that's for comedic effect. People people don't do that, because my parents didn't do that. Like mm -hmm. like d neither of them did. Like if something if my dad wanted to do something and my mom didn't want him to do it, she'd just tell him. She'd just be like, mm -hmm. if you go do that, it'll piss me off. Don't do that. Or like or sh and she wouldn't say don't. Like, she'd be like, if you do, she's like, you can go do whatever you want. You're a grown man. But no, I won't be happy about it. Mm -hmm. But like, uh, yeah. So like, and then I realized that my parents were both also neurodivergent. So. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hey. Yeah. So I was like, ah, this is what being raised in the autism household is like. <laughs> Sounds about right. So we, uh, I talked about this with Crafty. Um, do you have the su Do you have the suspicion? Who Who do you think is the the sussy imposter amongst your parents? Oh, my father, one hundred percent. I give him shit about it constantly. Mm hmm. Given and he's so so he's it's so funny. 
um, he'll do something and then he'll talk about like an experience or something that he has and it every time it sounds like a symptom of autism so I'll just say you know what that sounds like and he's just like oh god damn it and I say uh, the, you know that's a symptom of autism and he gets so mad because he knows I'm right this has been going on for about a year now <laughs> Social cue exists. Me. I'll pretend I didn't see that. Yeah, it's same. Mm-hmm. Um, women are better th- at lying. See, I don't think it's. I don't. That's that's the thing too. I don't think it's lying. It's because like it's like we talked about this. Thing. Yeah, we talked about this last stream. Mm-hmm. Is the reason that it's so much harder to diagnose autism in women is because we are taught, um, we're taught how to behave. Like, like men don't really have the same, when you're growing up, boys don't really have the same, like, societal so, coaching that you get as a girl. Mm-hmm. Like, you have to, when you're AFAB, like, they, they teach you, like, this is how you behave. This is how you act. This is how you should be. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's patriarchy. <laughs> but we don't, we're not talking about that today. <laughs> that is another stream. That's another stream. Yeah, societal uh, coaching is a yeah. factor, I feel like. I agree. It's it's def it defo is. Because as a girl, you get a different amount of a different amount and a different kind of societal coaching. So girls learn mm-hmm. how to mask easier and sooner than boys do. Mm-hmm. Um So like uh so it's harder. And then I, I mentioned this last stream too, and I think this is interesting. Um Autism in women, in AFABs, is more mm-hmm. commonly diagnosed as bipolar disorder, and bipolar yeah. and bipolar disorder in AMABs is more commonly diagnosed as autism. Mm-hmm. Which I think is super interesting, because the symptoms present it differently. Is, yeah. Because they pre- the symptoms present differently, and they are, and society teaches you how to respond to those emotions and those symptoms differently. I think that's mm-hmm. super interesting. I, yeah. I think it is. Because... Mm-hmm. I don't, hmm. how do I say this? I don't want to say that, like, sometimes some symptoms of autism are taught, is, uh, like, taught, but I do think, you know, sometimes if you are, you know, brought up in a neurodivergent household, there are some things that you learn that are perhaps symptoms of autism. You know, mm-hmm. as somebody as somebody who unintentionally was, uh, yeah, yeah, like some of some like, of the some of the behaviors I have, and some of like my uh, th- symptoms, like th- things that I've learned later on in life that were symptoms of autism, are just things my parents did. <laughs> yeah. So, and it's not just with autism either. So, okay, here's a weird one, and I'm sorry, this has nothing to do with autism, but my father is like blind right like right. legally blind mm-hmm. um so, so he has some of his, his, his bleh, goodness he has some of his vision but not all of it mm-hmm. um but okay this is gonna sound a bit funky but he does operate the oven from time to time um that feels like a bad we idea have, <laughs> it, it does but it hasn't <laughs> failed us yet mm-hmm. um but, um, oh my god, oh, fuck, what was I going to say? <laughs> Hold on, just give me a second. Just Your father, who is blind, operates the oven from time to time. We have an, a 1940s Wedgwood, so it's one of the ones where you have to, like, light it. Mm-hmm. Like, you have to open the oven and light it. Mm-hmm. Um, and the way he would tell if the oven got lit or not would be that he listens to it. Yeah. You right. hear the you hear the sound the fire makes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't realize that I could just look in the oven, so I would always like <laughs> listen for if the oven was lit. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's just what I. That's what I. That's saw just what you do. do. That's, that's just, just what that, you do. That's just how you do it. It. Yeah, my fucking my parents are like that all the time. There's lots of little things that I'll do them, and then Brooke and Justin will look at me and go, "Why do you do it like that?" And I'm like, "Cause that's the way I learned how to do it. It's more complicated." It, yeah, but yeah. <laughs> um, sorry, just to answer a question in chat. 
Um, Black 979, uh, the failing role is that my father doesn't operate the oven anymore. True. I mean, he doesn't anymore. He doesn't. <laughs> I'm not going to cut him. I'm not going to comment on my interactions with you, but I could tell you were on the spectrum. It wasn't a guess. It was a sense. <laughs> I mean, yeah. No, it's not even like that's not even a dig. I'm very transparent about it because I don't mm -hmm. I, I don't I I mask so rarely. <laughs> I don't I don't bother. I don't care. Yeah, I mean, good for you honestly <laughs> i just i mean there's certain things i do differently in certain like friend groups like mm. uh but like i don't i don't know I, I think it's partly because i was raised in the household i was raised in that like i was my my mom would take me by the shoulders and be like no don't pretend it's gonna wear you out it's gonna be sad and then it's gonna make you sad and then when you show them later if they don't like it and they leave then that's gonna make you sad if you're gonna make yeah. friends, make friends with people who like you the way that you are. So I'm like, oh, true, damn, you're exactly. Sure, you're sure right. And so I just d didn't. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably why I got bullied so much. Oh. <laughs> um, I don't really care either. It's an unspoken acknowledgement on both sides. It's true. Mm -hmm. This is okay. This is, is a. That... Oh. Sorry. Go ahead. Uh, I, I was gonna say, uh, you no, you can ask because this is gonna be a different topic. Ah, uh, okay. Is there like a gaydar version for autism? Yes. Is there a term for that? Because we, d I feel like <laughs> we we we, uh, we sense each other like stand users. What is yeah. what is masking? I can guess, but I don't want to assume. So masking is when you like hide your. It's when you hide your symptoms, or like when mm -hmm. you. But the best way to think about it is it's when you pretend to be normal. Um, it's when you, yeah. like, like, you, um, like, for example, one of the things I have is, that I do, and I talked about this in the other stream, is, uh, I have echolalia, where if I think something is funny, I'll repeat it, and it's, like, so it's, like, not doing that, uh, being consciously aware of how loud I'm being, making a point to not talk about certain things, or talk about things a particular way, like, mm -hmm. but I don't, it's, I've, I used to have to do it. And I don't like to. It wears me the fuck out. So I just kind of don't. <laughs> but that's probably why a lot of people who don't like me think that I'm a lot. Is because I am. Because I don't. I don't mask. I don't try to. I don't pretend. I don't. I don't hold it in. Because it's it's cringe and it just makes me sad. Man, I wish I were cringe free. <laughs> I, I still mask, like, to this day, and it's, like, not because, like, I feel like I need to, but it's just because I don't know how not to. Mm-hmm. No, understandable. It's, like, it's, it's hard. It's hard unmasking when you've done it for, like, most, if not all of your life. It's true. It's true. Being forced to is, it sucks. Oh, my God, yeah. You're kind of on the chill side. Open up the floodgates. Yeah, uh, hit five hundred dollars. Hit five hundred dollars in the charity donations, and and I will. That was the reward. Is you you want to see me at my most autistic? Uh, I specifically said for those of you who aren't aware, at the top of your chat, you will see uh, that we are raising money for the Autism Self Advocacy Network. If we hit five hundred dollars, uh, I'm going to do uh, I'm going to do a Kenshin info dump stream. Where I'm just, that's all I'm going to talk about for, for as long as I can talk about it. Oh, so like full, the final boss of autism, if you will. Yes. Yeah. Love it. Love that for you. That'll, you know, that'll be it. Pays. How funny is that? <laughs> if you wanna, it'll be charity. It's good for you. And you can put, you can write it off on your taxes. I, I've just finished my fucking taxes. <laughs> I know. Ah! For the people who haven't. For the people who haven't, yes. Charities are right off on your taxes. The goal is a total of $500. Masking is an unfun thing to do. Had to mask religiously for like three years. It was an unfun experience. I'm glad I don't have to do it anymore. Same. Oh, God, yeah. For me, not masking is just having a thousand yard stare. Understandable. Mood. Ah. I wanted, um, I also wanted to ask. Mm-hmm. 
Um, and if this is something you don't want to talk about, uh, we don't have to. But I was wondering because uh, I don't I don't know if I don't know if y'all know this. Wondering, thank you for the twenty five dollars. I appreciate that immensely. Uh. Uh, if you don't want to talk about this, we don't have to. But I, I was wondering, um, do you mm -hmm. think that being, uh, as some of you might not know, uh, Mortis is, is a POC? Yeah. Uh, a, per a person of culture. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, but as a, as a person of color, I was wondering, do you think that the experience that you have is uh, different? from the, the perceived, like, the more commonly perceived, um, uh, like, the, the white experience. Do you think that that adds to it at all? Uh, hmm. So, this is kind of a hard one to answer, because as is, my, um... James Porter, you <laughs> shut your <laughs> mouth! I do not, I do not like feet! I'm Mexican. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> why does you? Why? Why can you not like feet if you're Mexican? I I don't know what the correlation there is, but person of culture, <laughs> fucking. No, I do not like feet. God. <laughs> um. But no. See, that's a hard one. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, it, it, see, that's a hard one to answer. I like, because as is, my um, my upbringing wasn't very like standard for a POC household. Mm -hmm. Um, so, and it's not just my mother who does this, but like, um, my grandparents when they first came to this country, they were very like. Wait, hold on. My great grandparents, mm -hmm. when they first came to this country, they came to this country with the intention of um, becoming as Americanized as possible. And that kind of carried through with my grandparents, less so with my abuelita, but uh, then again with my mother. So uh, my upbringing, well, yes, it was, there were some aspects of Mexican culture in it. Um, it was also very, like, Americanized. Right. You know? Um, but even then, like, I don't, I don't know, honestly. I feel like mental health as a whole in Mexican households is not very talked about. No. Um... It's, I don't want to say it's like, it's kind of taboo I've, in some households. I've, I've noticed that amongst my, um, my friends who are people of color, that quite a few of them have talked about that in POC households, mental health especially seems to be a weird, like a not well talked about or explored thing. Mm-hmm. That sucks. I hate that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's something that affects everybody. I, I don't think there should be any sh any shame in that. There really shouldn't be, but, you know. Uh, something, something, Jesus. Hmm. Which actually does have some play on that in terms of my household. Uh, haha. -ha, my parents were deacons. <laughs> Ooh! My, I didn't know uh, that. My grandfather is, well, was a pastor. <coughs> as well. Uh, uh, for a very prominent uh, Spanish-speaking church in Neo Francisco, so I didn't know that. Yeah. I, d to be fair, I also didn't realize that my parents were deacons until recently. No, you didn't. <laughs> I just thought they were very cool with the church that we used to go to. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. They are. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, um, oh my god, um, we used to go to this church in Neo Francisco that was like. Okay, one of my favorite. This this has some relation, I promise, I swear. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite horror movies of all times is uh, Mikael Suave's The Church, right? Mm -hmm. um, the church that that was filmed in was this church in 
Hungary, and it's like, oh, I don't remember the name of it, but think like very gothic looking kind of church. Right. Okay. Um, the church I, you said it was a church in a horror movie. I, I, that's all I needed. <laughs> yep. Uh, that's a movie I want to watch with you, by the way. Sure. Uh, ooh, ooh. But, ooh. um, ooh, ooh. but, um, <laughs> Artistic, um, <laughs> but uh, so the church that my parents used to be deacons at is kind of similar, but it's very like kind of like a mid-century modern type of gothic esque church, I guess. Um, but uh, I used to be able to like go all over the fucking place in that church. I'm sorry, and I just, I I'm sorry, real quick, I just read chat, I never made my first communion, I fell asleep in the catechism! <laughs> I oh God. So, that's so good! <laughs> Jesus. But, um... I'm sorry, continue. No, it's okay. <laughs> um, but, no, yeah, I just, I, I was kind of allowed to, like, go and explore the church as much as I wanted to and I never really knew why because I think other kids got in ah oh has Mortis died we've lost him chat <laughs> but here we are oh jeez I guess Crusader Heaton may be a bit jarring. I do play a paladin most of the time. This is true. So, uh, to, uh, to, to, there's no, there's no clean transition. So as per always, I've asked my guests, uh, to talk about their hyperfixations, uh, oh, and, and their, and their special interests. And I didn't mm -hmm. even have to ask you, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I'm going to regret this. <laughs> <laughs> so Skyrim yeah hi uh, <laughs> how have the Rigmore streams been going oh god so uh, d listen the mod the Rigmore series as a mod is very interesting okay mm -hmm. Because technically, well, yes, there are some pretty jarring bugs here and there. Um, it's not bad, and it's a very unique experience, right? Mm -hmm. On the technical front. The writing, however... Um, <laughs> <laughs> is it's bad. Like, it's, it's pretty bad, yeah. <laughs> um, there's no real choice... Or any actual like opportunity to uh, role play out your character, so you're kind of on a railroad, Sucks. Um, especially during like the first Rigmore Bruma. Um, the second one, uh, there's a little bit more choice, but it's like not really like. <sighs> uh, Hateful Eight. We are talking about Skyrim. However, right now, specifically, we're talking about a specific Skyrim mod. Um, I think the biggest... The thing that I keep going back to... Uh, it's interesting how someone wrote this character and thought that this would be charming. Mm-hmm. Um, You've shown... Sure, I've, I've seen, I've seen mm -hmm. some of the clips, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, last stream, I had to save to beat the shit out of Rigmore twice <laughs> just because she's gotten so fucking annoying um but that's like so that's one aspect of it yeah the other aspect is like there's this weird forced romance thing but then at the same time there's like this uh, uh father daughter relationship that's being written here and it's just very fucking uncomfortable yeah, given like, what I know about mods. Yeah, given what you've shown me of those mods, I can understand why it would be. Mhm. Mm and that's not even going near the whole oh, god. 
the body hair conversation, but yeah. we are not. I, I genuinely do not have the mental spoons for that, so we're not going to go there. So, um, uh, so as per usual, as I did with Crafty, where I, mm-hmm. I outed him for his autistic behavior of having a spreadsheet of common writer quotes, uh, I am going to now out Mortis. Oh god. So the way I discovered that uh, Skyrim was one of Mortis's hyperfixations was when, and I shit you not, I woke up in the morning <laughs> to 126 <laughs> DMs on Discord. <laughs> that's that's that started with what what was it the was it the Kaiden modding stuff? No, you no. Were the pool then. No, it no. was it was when you first started yelling at me about the Skyrim romance mod. Oh, oh god, yeah. It was oh my god. Yeah. How did it st- what was the you said it's probably some sort of like this fucking whore or something like that. I don't know. No, you said something very akin to like uh we all aboard the fuck train or something like that. <laughs> oh god. No, that sounds about right. I d- I don't remember. And then it was page You know what? Hang on. Let me see if I can fucking find it. <laughs> it was just pages of me like bitching about this one forward that I had picked up. Hang on. Um as you're searching this up. I do I do love Skyrim. Skyrim has a very, very near and dear place in my heart, despite how shit the game is. Um uh, Skyrim was the first like real video game that I had ever played. And this was like in 2015. Uh, I wasn't much of a gamer back then um, because I didn't really have a computer that could run it, but my computer could run Skyrim. So uh, I played Skyrim, I modded it, I fell completely in love. Um, Truly, there is no greater feeling that I've ever experienced than loading into the game, finally being able to walk around and just exploring. Uh, if, if if you're familiar with Skyrim, uh, the way the intro ends is that you're placed out of this cage and wh- the, whichever follower you're with is like, uh, looks like that dragon, looks like that dragon's gone now. It's probably best we speed it, uh, split up. Uh, my relative works the job in Riverwood. Uh, and then you like you can either stay together and you get a little introduction on some things in Skyrim i.e. the Standing Stones and Bleak Falls Barrow or you can just kind of go off on your own and explore and I went off on my own and I explored and I just I fell in love so it was that little snowy area outside of Helgen where that uh, the cave exit is and it just I don't know it was it just it was the most serotonin I had experienced from a situation like that Um, and just recently uh, I finally was able to play Skyrim Special Edition and while it wasn't exactly the same feeling it was pretty fucking close and I just I don't know It, it just it made me so happy I don't I don't know how else to say it. There's but... there you don't need to. It's it's it you wouldn't it gives you the dopamine and that's all that matters. It's yeah. So I found but... uh I found the origin. Oh, fantastic. Uh because <laughs> uh it started uh what I was thinking was the phrase left turn was what I was thinking of. Because the first time it was the rant about cyberpunk. Yes, it was. Yeah, no, I remember that one. But I, yep. f- I found it. I found the, I found the mm. conversation. Uh, at 3.11 in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> I got a text from you. At 3.11 in the morning. And it goes as mm. follows. Uh, it's ever, so... D- most of these are a sentence and then a new message, which is why there were so many notifications. Mm-hmm. But it went as such. 
by the way, all of this is in all caps. <laughs> oh boy, Heaton, it's car time, but this time no left turns, only crashing, because that's all this piece of shit mod does, crash. So, okay, I've gotten to the end of this stupid mod once, but that was a hot couple of updates ago. This is about the Skyrim romance mod, by the way. I've speed ran to the point of just before the pregnancy, but it's different from how I remembered, worse even. So, usually when I play Skyrim, I play with the characters in mind. So with this in mind, I play Amalia very neutral. She's on her own side because she doesn't know much about anything. She does want to make the right choice, the wrong choice. This, however, goes out the window when dealing with a very delusional man who thinks you're bearable, I guess, means I love you, and if you touch me again without per my permission, I'll kill you, means she's just playing hard to get. Every twist, every turn, every fucking option I could tell him no, I told him no. Sex? Fuck off. I'll freeze you. Thank you very much. Let me take you to a secluded spot so I can kiss you. I'm shouting you off this fucking ledge and I'm not healing you. Here's my ring because women like trinkets. Here's it back because I don't bloody want it. He has the fucking audacity to propose after I've made it very clear I'm not interested in him more times than I can count. He gets all hissy when I say no. Kinda. There's a point where you can say no to him anymore and that's shitty. When he tells you he really loves you, he hits you with a don't say it to me if you don't mean it back. The options? I love you too. Well, I love cats. I guess you're all right. Finally, you idiot. I've been waiting for so long. Where's my I have nothing to say to you? Because really, at that point, Amaralia would start swinging and she's not stopping and then he proposes he puts the ring on your fingers if you've already said yes what that's not how it works it's a stupid pop-up message not an actual ring fuck off <laughs> and it just goes and it goes and it goes and it goes and it goes so um so hold on, so this hold on hold on wandering just before the pregnancy update Listen, if you want to hear more, I will be streaming tonight. I will be playing Skyrim. I will talk about it. So, uh, eight thirty p.m. PSD. So, for for context for the chat, for context, these messages start at three eleven in the morning. They stop at three fifty. So he was doing this in my DMs for almost forty minutes straight. <laughs> This was not the first and not the last time that I've done this at ungodly hours of the evening. <laughs> and it ends with, I'm so sorry, I know it's like ass o'clock over there, I'm just, I'm so mad. <laughs> and I respond with, it was quarter to four in, in the AM, but applause, very good. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, oh my god. There are some mods in this community that, like, you say it and I just get started derogatory. I get so mad. It was oh so fucking funny for me to just be minding my own business, and I'm like, why do I have 90 Discord notifications? <laughs> oh, they're all from Mortis. <laughs> Love the passion behind him. We stand passionate beans. If listen, if Mortis is if Mortis is a possessor of nothing in regards to these, it's it's passion. Yeah. So like it's passion and struggling to make situations funny because if it's not funny then it's not worth it at least when it comes to me relaying this information because i know like you know some of my friends have no interest in skyrim so i have to make it entertaining somehow <laughs> it's so fucking funny <laughs> and that's what matters to me and i listen need as long as it's funny and not annoying you know true and i need you to know that i love you with mm. all of my heart and i do read every single one of them <laughs> Yes! <laughs> Every time you do it, I'm like, okay, I got, I got it. I gotta know what. What is, what is, what, what is the dog doing? <laughs> That's it's like the same thing as, can I be mean for a second, you know? Yeah. Fucking every <laughs> time. Has the energy of, what the dog doing? <laughs> The dog. Oh, what is the dog doing? The dog is hyperfixating. Is what the dog's doing. <laughs> so, uh, Mortis has been trying to get me to play Skyrim. I have, yeah. Uh, and I'm I'm resistant. <laughs> resistant. However, we have come to a deal. We have come to a deal. Uh, I I promised Mortis that if he watches all of Roni Kenshin with me, then I'll play Skyrim. So I'm watching all of Rurouni Kenshin with Heaton, and mm. I'm having a great time. I knew you would. Not just because Rurouni Kenshin is a pretty good series, but also because I like spending time with my friends. I have a lot and of- And also, I really want Heaton to play Skyrim. <laughs> 
Well, the benefit is that I don't have to buy it because the minute that I even expressed the slightest interest, uh, he bought me all I of it. I bought all of it. <laughs> I think I got you. Did I? Hold on. Was it like, did I get you old room or special edition? Uh, I can check. I think I got you old room because I don't. Let me check. It was very fucking funny. <laughs> Because I was like, I've been thinking about it. And he goes, how seriously? And I'm like, I don't know. I've been noodling around with the idea why. And then immediately, I he's like, uh, check your check your Steam. Mm -hmm. uh, hateful Eight, that's uh, the anniversary edition. That kind of gets updated automatically if you have a uh, special edition. Which, so uh, in 2016... If you had Old Rim, then you just got Special Edition. Um, I didn't find that out until three years later when I looked at my Steam and was like, when did I get this? Because I never bought it. Is it in... Oh, it is. It should, it should just be like... The I got Elder Scrolls. Yeah, it, I was gonna say it was the Elder. Scrolls. I was like, why the fuck can't I? And then I'm like, oh, that's right on Steam. It's labeled as Elder Scrolls. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, but, I'm but, a but, fool. But, so, uh, is it just the Elder Scrolls Skyrim or Skyrim Special Edition? It's just Elder Scrolls Skyrim. Oh, okay, then yeah, that's Old Rim. That's and the then functional you, version. And then you got me the, the add-ons. The d DLC, yeah. Elder God and a puppy sitting in a room five feet apart because they wait and they aren't five feet apart. Does that mean they? <laughs> yes, we are autistic. We are. Now Heaton can get a goth big titty girlfriend. <laughs> I mean, this is true. <laughs> Skyrim the Tism in edition. Skyrim the Tism edition. Well, yeah. I wanted... Listen. So I was I was asking about the lore because I'm like Mortis. I like to role play. So I was mm -hmm. like I, so I was asking a little bit about the lore, and he told me about Khajiit because I was like I want to know more about the cat people, and then uh, there was a TikTok that was talking about like some of the Khajiit types that are mm -hmm. in um, elsewhere. Well, because because you were you were just telling me about them, and then I was like oh. Oh, and I'm like, oh, Mortis was telling you about this. And then on that TikTok, I discovered mm -hmm. the Alphique. Yep. And I sent to Mortis and I was like, I want to be that. I want to be a cat. I uh, think that's for, hilarious. Yeah, for the benefit of chat, uh, the Alphique are just house cats. They're just cats. But mm -hmm. they can talk. And they can do magic. And they wear clothes. And they're cute. Uh, and they're also very fucking dangerous spies. Well, yeah, because cat. I just. Oh, I hate really. We don't have the time. We just don't have the time for that one. <laughs> but I was like, I want to be a cat. Is there a mod where I can be the kitty? And he looked, not and there yet. was not. I'm still looking, by the way. I want to be an Alphique. Yeah. Um. That being said, so I d Hateful Eight has brought up some concerns. I need to be very clear here. On one hand, while I do want Heaton to have the good, serious role-playing experience with Skyrim, I also want Heaton to have the best fucking time ever. Um, and that's why uh, I think, uh, <laughs> You have to be bipedal, to... which is cringe. You do, you do have to be bipedal, but listen, we're close, we're close! There are centaur mods, you know, we're getting there. Oh, black, um, uh, black, I'm she, they, so both work. I will, I will also accept she pronouns, don't worry about it, it's fine. Yeah. But I want, um, I just, listen, I think it'd be funny. My, it would be. It my would brain be really says, funny. listen, I want, I want the dragonborn to just be a fucking cat. I think that, mm -hmm. I think narratively, that's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, no, it would be, it would be really funny. Um, but, so, again, while I do want Heaton to have a good, serious time role-playing about, uh, role-playing 
in Skyrim, I also want Heaton to have a good funny time. So uh, when I went to visit, there was going to be a plan of like, and it didn't really work out too well, and that's okay. Um, but the plan was to have uh, Justin and I install a bunch of surprise ship posty mods onto Nexus for Skyrim. I do want to do after I've and played then it for have a little go in blind. I was gonna say after I've played it for a little while, I still want to do that again. That'd be funny. Yeah. Uh, wondering, I have not told Heaton much about the Dwemer, I don't think, but... I know! Something... They're the... They're the ones who made the robots, right? They are the ones who made the robots, yeah. yeah. And you've told me a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, so, they're called dwarves, quote-unquote, but they're not dwarves, they're really fucking tall. Uh, where the where fuck, the do... fuck do they go? You know, that's a good question. Um... Same place as Neptune. Yeah, that's... You know, that's a question for Kagranak. Uh, <laughs> uh, and I'm curious about the centaur mods. Um, some of them are good, some of them are bad. Most of them are bad. I'd give it a couple more years before uh, re-examining it, to be honest. Um, um, oh, I also wanted to share, because I was, I, I am, unironically, a little interested in some of the, the horror mods I've heard you talk about. You've mentioned that, they're, that they exist, and I'm curious. As a spooky liker. Uh, I'm sorry, hold on one more time. I said, as a spooky liker, you've mentioned horror mods a couple of times. <gasps> Ooh, yes, okay. So, there's one really, really fucking good one that I actually think you'd really like. Uh, not just because, uh, ooh, hee hee, hoo hoo, uh, scares that are actually really fucking effective and not jump scary at all. Um, but also, it's this mod is really good at creating an uncomfortable, spooky atmosphere. Um, there's two that I really want you to play through. The first one is Clockwork, for those aware in chat. Um, which is like... Oh my god. It's, it's really up your alley, to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, the second one is called Dark End, and it's not exactly a horror mod. But um, it is one of the more interesting mods where you don't have a quest objective, you don't have like um, you don't have very much guidance. You just have the desire to explore and a mystery of this like abandoned island city, um, and it's really fucking good. Oh my god, Heaton! I I don't do very well with horror because no. I. You know, a lot of it is jump scares and spooky faces and hee hee hoo hoo. And that's not something that I can always handle. Um, he did uh, he did get jump scared by a crow in Resident Evil uh, I Village did get so bad that he in... cried. Yeah, no, that is true. I also, I did stream Clockwork uh, a while ago and I was jump scared by Bones once and by a shadow, like from a lantern light rising from the floor. It scared the shit out of me. Not the light, the shadow. Fucking... I I love... Listen, I love that my friends are babies. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're... I'm the babies of them all. It's just so... Shut the fuck up. It doesn't scare me. It's... Just, I just hate it. <laughs> um... Fucking... Uh, oh! While you're here... Yeah, hi. Uh, so, Mortis, thanks to a recent... Was it a sub or a dono goal? Uh, oh, um, so I am currently running a uh, fundraiser for the St. Jude's Children's Hospital. It's a part of their Play Live event. It's me and a couple other VTuber friends of mine. Um, we hit a milestone in the fundraiser. So I was asked to provide a horror game. Mm -hmm. So while you're here, if we can take if we can take a momentary aside. Oh, I would love to. Yeah. Uh, I so the reason why I asked you is because you're one of my best friends and you know what I can handle, and you know what'll make me piss my pants. So I think that'll be funny. So here's here's the question, right? Okay. Yeah. Uh, do you, what are themes you just you cannot do? Um, spiders are a big no. Okay. Um, trauma to the eyes is another big one. Mm 
Um, Lots of arachnophobics in my friend group. Yeah. Uh, and that's fucking bad for me. Um, I think the only other one that I can think of is like a... Uh, so, okay. The This is kind of a weird one. In Resident Evil 7... Signalis, Signalis, Signalis. Listen... <laughs> Here, here's the thing. Mm -hmm. I know what Mortis can handle, and again, mm -hmm. Mortis got jump scared by a crow so hard he cried. I think Signalis would kill him. I, I think he would. You would hate. You and I are relatively stalwart people. Mortis is not. Mortis I'm would simply so not evaporate. When it comes to horror. When uh, okay, so when I was a kid, uh, there was this one crime show that I was watching with my parents, and um, the show just barely showed a bit of a body. It was like uh, these two old women fighting over this box, and one of them opened it, and she's like, "Oh, a wig!" and then she lifts it, and it's a head. Um, that shit scared me for like so bad that I could not sleep for a week. Okay, I'm baby. I am not joking. I am a pussy. I am scared so easily by things. Oh, Dead Space um, would kill him. Dead Space would kill him on the Dead spot. Dead Space probably would kill me. Five um, minutes of Dead Space would end his entire career. God, yeah. Fucking, ugh, we don't have time for this. So th that one, Resident Evil 7, mm -hmm. um, there's that one, uh, it's the mother of the Baker family, I think. How she has, like, the nest from her hoo-ha or something that bugs come out yes of. i cannot handle gross. any of that gross yeah i'm None not of that. it doesn't freak me out but it's gross it's super gross yeah um i okay i know that you're i have i have two suggestions okay uh and it's going to follow because I I have a game that I really like, that I think is really good, that I want to uh, inflict upon my uh, inflict upon my friends. Okay. Uh, but I have two questions. Uh, how do you how do you feel about cannibalism? I'm fine with cannibalism. Yeah. Clip it chat. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Mortis eats people. Confirmed. <laughs> I don't eat people. Area werewolf eats people. I can't believe we've done this. I can't believe you've done this. We fucking got him, boys. Um. And then, listen, I know how you are about, like... Because you had a hard time with Mortuary Assistant. I did, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, what about Mortuary Assistant uh, broke you not even a full minute in? <laughs> <laughs> didn't, even fin didn't even finish the tutorial, by the way. I didn't finish the tutorial at all, and it was one good scare. Fuck. Um... Oh my god, I don't even know how to describe it. So, the whole- the thing... No! <laughs> Thank you, Zeddy! <laughs> if you like eating people, let me hear you say hell yeah! Hell yeah! Got him! Get these motherfuckers! <laughs> Um, but, okay, so I have a really specific fear of when, of, like, being watched specifically from, like, a window, right? Um, so that was the scare that got me to quit the game, because it just hit me so hard, so... So, like, how bad? Um... Like, like, extremely bad, or, like... It's something that triggers my paranoia really fucking hard mm. like quickly and hard damn all right well fuck 
Get to shelf cooking companions for another friend. God damn it. <laughs> Keep wanting people to experience that one. I mean, hey, listen. Mi amor, mi vida, mi corazón. I'll put it on the list. Oh, you'll die. <laughs> I, I know. Cooking one of with friends? Cooking companions. Cooking companions, okay. Uh, the game you- No, the game you should play for your stream, uh, it's called Mothered. Mother, okay. Mothered. Mothered, okay. Yeah, as- as in you were mothered, past tense. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay. So, Cooking Companions and Mothered, anything else? Uh, I think Mothered would be great for you, because it's- Because, like, there aren't- there aren't really any jump scares, but its atmosphere made me made me uncomfortable. Ah, okay. It was a it was a good long stream of me being like, no, fuck, fuck, I don't like this, fuck you, fuck that, fuck this. Uh, my only see. request, only request, is uh -huh. that I would like to be there for that. Oh my god, yeah, of course, it's a requirement. Are you kidding me? <laughs> uh, I mean. I I think Never Ending Nightmares would be good for you. Cause that's Never Ending Nightmares, okay. Cause it was a little it was a little like it wasn't quite enough for me, but I think you'd really like it. Uh okay. it does I will warn you preemptively, that one goes a little hard on the gore. Oh, I, I have no issues with gore. Yeah. Listen, as long as it's TOS, you know. Oh it's TOS! It's just like it's just Intense. Yeah. A lot of, like, yeah. uh... I'm trying to... My brain wants to phrase it as a lot of self-harm, but, like, not in the way you think. Ooh, interesting. Okay. Like, like there's not a lot of cutting or burning, but, like, it's, it's the main character doing bad stuff to himself. Ah, uh, okay. All right, yeah. Self-destruction. Got yeah. it. I thought that one was boring. Yeah, it wasn't... Well, it's... I think that its atmosphere is really good. It's just that, like, for people who partake in, like, a lot of horror, I think it's a little... I think it, it's not... It doesn't have the same punch. I think Mortis, who is baby, would get a lot of enjoyment out of it. I think... I, I think it would. Yeah. I think that's Listen. something you would like. Because it's... Because it's got a great atmosphere, and it's really cool. It's mm -hmm. just not... For me in particular, it's just not quite enough. Ah, I see, I see. Uh... Which means it'll probably kill me. ka <laughs> Uh, I will also always, like, always recommend Inscription. Inscription was fun. Inscription? Okay. You get to play the spooky card game. <gasps> the spook- Oh! Okay, I know which one that is. Alright, mm -hmm. cool, 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 cool. That one goes some cool directions. I wanna- I'm- I'm here for these devs. I'm here for- oh, yeah. Uh, now I want a clip of Heat and Smiley and then browse for as she pencil dives deep into thought. <laughs> it happens a lot. You'll notice my, one of the things that I really like about my model is that Okuda made me very expressive. So a lot of the time you can see my, like, micro expressions and I catch it all the time when I'm editing clips. It's very good. It's very good. It's very good. Um, he was very cool, and Okuda is very cool, and he did a, an amazing job, to be he honest. Did. I need him to, I need him to get back in touch with me. I wanted, I wanted outfits. Yeah. I want him to open his commissions. I Stop as well. having your commissions be closed. I want to give you many. Hey. Many. Hey, Steam. Steam, what the fuck? What's up? I just, I went to, um, just on autopilot, I went to the the Steam store page mm -hmm. and just was kind of idly scroll scrolling down while I was talking and I just saw, uh, on new and trending, Magic Pussy, chapter one. Oh. Wait, I have cooking companions. Hold on. Yeah, I think I got it for you. Ah, yeah. Spooky. Uh, let's see, and then... Main character harming Never... themselves. Is that the game where the main character peels their blood? Yes! It's the guy where he 
where he pulls his, uh, he grabs one of the the veins in his wrist and just pulls it out. Ooh, that one might not work for me then. Which one was that one? That's Never Ending Nightmares. Poggers, I'm actually going to remove that one from the list. <laughs> yeah, it's stuff like that. He sticks his hand in a meat grinder. It's just, okay, so this one, this is really weird. Um, sticking hands in meat grinders, it's uncomfortable and it'll squick me out, but it's not something that'll like get me to stop playing. When it comes to veins, that that's kind of it. That's it. GG. Just, I'm just out. pull them. Just pull them right out. Yeah, the, oh, I I can't. There's no way. Slorp. <laughs> stop. <laughs> What about Werewolf the Apocalypse? I wouldn't recommend that to him, because I recommend to him things that are good. Yeah, and also I watched a playthrough of that one, and I do not think that game is good. Oh yeah, he was he was there for some of that. I was, yeah. And it was not good. It was... I can't... It was not I, good. I still cannot believe that game literally ends with the, like, I'm gonna get that filthy animal, and then just credits. Wow. Uh, I can't believe you finished it, to be honest. I would, I'm gonna be so also, fucking for real, I wouldn't have if Ben hadn't have paid me. <laughs> yeah, god, that was what I was about to say, because Ben paid you. <laughs> it was sure a video game. It was I, an experience, yeah. But, okay, so Cooking Companions, Mothered, Inscription, uh, anything else? I think those three are good. Okay, cool. Uh, they're all like tight, shorter experiences, so that way you won't be like sinking hours and hours into something. Yeah, hell yeah, nice. So I will put that to poll in uh, my Discord, I think. Cooking companions. I mean, they all have something that's like, because like if I didn't give you something that wasn't gonna freak you out, then what'd be the point? Thank you yeah. for the follow. Um. Hey, yeah. But like. Uh, yeah, giving you something that, like, uh, like, something that wasn't gonna freak you out kind of defeats the point. So, like, yeah. Cooking Companions has a lot of the, like, uh, because if you do it right, and you play it right, and you get the right ending, uh, then you get haunted by ghosts. Oh, interesting. And you get, like, the, that's when you get, like, the whispering, the, like the faces in in different places, etc, cetera, etc, cetera, right? Um, I see what you mean by faces. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 Mm -hmm. uh, so that's, so that'd be spooky, but I don't think it's, I, I think since it's a visual novel format, it wouldn't be as bad for you. Yeah, I mean, I could handle Doki Doki Literature Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Literature Club pretty okay, mm -hmm. but also this is kind of, it's gonna freak me out, but it shouldn't be too bad. You'll cry, but you won't die. I'll cry. I won't die. Yeah. Uh, inscription has a lot of, like, good tense atmosphere shit that I think you'd like. I don't think that'll scare you so much as it'll, like, it's good tension. Mm -hmm. Um, and you'd, the mothered is, mothered is just very good. <laughs> I, yeah, I looked up the, uh, game page for Mothered, and I feel like that's gonna be the one, to be honest. Mm hmm Very, it, uh, the perfect way to sum it up, uh, I found it on the Haunted PS1 demo disc. Yeah, uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, it looks like something that came from a fucking Haunted PS1 demo And it's so good! I had, I had a fucking blast. That's my, uh, Indie best, uh, best best of the year so far. Oh, wow. Love to work on a visual novel one day as a furry artist. I think I would thrive in that environment. I think you would. There's quite a bit of them. I, you know, speaking of visual novels. Y yeah. Speaking of working on them. Mm-hmm. Are you? Me? Yes. Uh... I have not put in much work, no. But I'm... Listen, I'm gonna be honest. I did have another kind of important project that I had to work on before all of that. Mm -hmm. uh, just because of the time crunch on it. Mm -hmm. uh, something, something. 
hashtag get those tits on a shaker. Don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I can start working on them again. Thank I'm you. I'm close. <laughs> I'm getting there. I'm so close. Uh, it, it, again, part of it is like one, I have a job. Uh, mm. Two, I am very depressed <laughs> on top of everything else. <laughs> Uh, and three, that depression does re result in art block or looking at faces and uh, realizing, oh, this looks awful, and then having to redo them like later down the line. Mortis, I'd love to see some Frank and Titties at your own pace. Thank you. <laughs> well, actually, I have some fantastic news for you. Uh, those ones are already done. Yeah, his are done. Yeah. Adam was the first one you did, I think. Adam was the first one that I did. Uh, and then it was Drake, though I still have to make the outfit bases for him. Uh, same with Saizo, and uh, I last I stopped, it was the <laughs> unicorn one. We did good tonight. I want Heaton's fish wife game. That one's not solely mine. Justin and I are making that one together. The concept was uh the concept was Justin's idea. It's Wait, werewolf. Keaton, I have a question for you. Hmm. Why is Cooking Companions labeled as a dating sim? Don't worry about it. Huh. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna super need you to not worry about it. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> You know, it'll be fine. Fantastic. Just, uh... Just don't, you know, just just make sure that you, you know who you're dating. It's fine. That's ominous, but yeah, I feel like out of all these characters, one is very distinctly my type, so... Yeah. Uh, oh, I, I... How do you, uh... Totally apropos of nothing. Apropos of uh, mm -hmm. absolutely nothing regarding the character that's your type. How do you, f you? Uh, how did you feel about uh, Clear's ending in Dramatical Murder? No. How do you? Uh, no! How do you feel about oh, Clear's God. bad ending? How do you feel about that? No, uh, mm -hmm. Hold on, his bad ending. Yeah. Oh God. How do you? Uh, how do you feel about quadruple amputations? Oh God. <laughs> Listen, there was a lot more to that than just quadruple amputation. Oh, ah! There's no sex God. in it if it okay. makes you feel any better. I, uh, yeah, but not by much. Yeah. <laughs> Ugh. God. Context: quadruple amputations. Yeah. You know. Uh, no, it was a uh, it was double it was a double amputation. Just took his legs. He still no. had his arms. Did, no, I thought they took his arms. I have to double check. Hang on. Oh, we have to double check. Fuck. I'm I'm confirming. Let me check the CGs. Nope, he still has his arms. Oh, cool. Yeah, so it's just his fucking legs. God. Well, and his... And his eyes. It was his tongue as and well, I believe. tongue, yeah. I forgot how hard on the, uh... How hard on the gore some of these CGs went. Oh my god, yeah. No, listen, Dramatical Murder was a crazy fucking series. Oh, oh yeah. I so I think the reason why we were confused is because of the sheer amount of fan art showing him without his arms. You're right. And I think when so I think where Claire's bad end like ended, he was about to take Alba's arms. I think I don't really remember all that well. Yeah, I I love somebody on uh 
I just saw, because I was looking up the CG, because I wanted to see if, if he had them in the CG, and he does. Uh, and I saw a Dramatical Murder Confession post, if you remember confession blogs on Tumblr. Mm -hmm. uh, and I saw the, though it's so sick, I love the CG where Ren is eating Alba alive. For some reason, I can't stop looking at it. And I'm like, dog, not a, f I preemptively, like, not a sex thing. No, not at all. But, like, me too, sister. <laughs> It's like no, I'm so yeah, weirdly because no, it. it's because it's so fu like it's so fucked. It's visceral and it's uncomfortable. It's kind of like watching a uh, a train crash. To be honest, yeah. Like it's it's so much and you want to look away but you just can't. And I I tr listen. Dramatical murder was. I, I don't fully remember the story. I don't remember if it was good or not. The art is fucking fantastic. I thought so. Welcome to another like, episode of things that every... Somebody asked me, like, what's a thing that, that everyone else thinks is cringe that you really like? And I stand by. I really like Dramatical Murder. Yeah, valid, to be honest. I don't... Like, its story isn't fucking groundbreaking or anything, but, like... No, no, not at all. But, like, Nitro... One of the things that Nitro Chiral does really, really well is that it makes stories that are very visceral in both a positive mm. and a negative way. And also sex. And also sex. Like, the good endings are, like, heart-wrenchingly sweet. Oh, that's so good. But then the bad endings are so, like, heart-crushingly awful. <laughs> like, Ren's bad ending made sad. almost made me throw up. Oh god, no, valid. Listen, uh, cannibalism's one dropping. thing, but like... Yeah. Yeah. No, it's it's pretty intense. Uh, I think Kojaku's bad end is the reason why I'm so into werewolves. No, I will not explain. It doesn't mean anything. But it does say something. Mm-hmm. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm mhm. Mm uh so you uh how do you feel about like uh emotional manipulation? How do you how do you feel about that? Um well, I've experienced a lot of it, so not good. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm mhm. Kojaku's bad end is uh, is it for you, huh? <laughs> <laughs> not in that way. Uh, cause, mind you, I got into Dramatical Murder when I did not have the brain cells for Dramatical Murder. Uh-huh. Uh, oh, me too! So, I didn't fully process all of what was going on. Um, all I saw was big feral hot man. Hot man tattoo red hair. Hmm. Werewolves. Fair. And that's where we are now. Mm-hmm. Had a... Had... Huh. What type of game? Uh, it's a- it's an arrow game. It's porn. It's porn. <laughs> it's porn. It's absolutely porn. You know what? You know how we've been, like, talking about, like, fansly streams and stuff? Yeah. I feel like Dramatical Murder is something that we should try doing for one of those streams. I think that'd be fun. Like, revisiting the series. I think that would be really fun, yeah. I'd love to. Mortis and I have- uh, we talked about playing, uh, the new one, Slow Damage. Uh on a f on his fansly it was that one and then also um and we still have to do this by the way uh the fucking um oh my god i did i don't have it saved anymore hold on uh it, you know the one you know which one it is oh yeah yeah oh yeah 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 what was it called fuck uh, I hope we're having the same thought. I hope we're having the same thought. Holy um, shit. When the fuck did I get gorilla t Oh my god. <laughs> what? I, I have a gorilla tag on my Steam list. I don't remember buying it. Here we go. Uh, Yeah, at any goddamn second. Where were the fucking ads for it? 
The price of flesh. The price of flesh, yes, that's it. The campfire experience. <laughs> you know, <sighs> chat. Dio, or er, uh, Mortis, is one of my best friends. Mm hmm. One of my best friends in the whole world. Mm hmm. And I question that. Uh, yeah. Every time we have this conversation. Because, <laughs> you know, something as a. Listen, as, as something of a horror creator myself, uh, I question my friendships with monster fuckers on the regular. Um, and then this one will just say things like that. I'll, I'll be like, hey, this, this game came out, and th this thing happens in it, and he'll go, oh yeah, mm -hmm. and I'll go, yeah, and I'll show it to him, and he'll be like, yeah, harder, daddy. And I'm like, I hate you. I didn't say harder, daddy. I don't have a daddy kink. Uh, no, you I said- I will say some fuck shit like, oh, haha, -ha, turn me into a marshmallow. <laughs> yeah, roast roast my chestnuts over the open fire, sir. Thank you. Like roast me like a small. <laughs> I hate it here. <laughs> I I I hate it here. <laughs> and listen, I said what I said. He's hot. I have no sense of self preservation. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he is. He also like. <laughs> He also oh, lops oh. off your- he also lops off your head with an axe! He does. Eventually. <laughs> Listen. Get out. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so who was your favorite in Dramatical Murder? Uh, Kojaku. Good. It's the right answer. Yeah. I so uh Kojaku, uh Clear was another good one, but not like a oh, uh Clear is like a romantic partner, as in I kinned Clear for a hot minute. Well, yeah, you're trans. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um it was Every Claire trans person I know the kinned the robot. Well, no no. Us trans men kin noise too. Gross. Which I also did. Gr oh gross! Cringe. It was for a very short time. I just like the little bunny cubes that he had. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm sure. I'm sure that was it. That was. That was it. I was obsessed with those little things. For a... I thought it was so cute. Hang on a minute. For reference, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna put you on blast. Okay. You want me to blast you? You want me to put you on blast? So you were a, uh, so you were a noise kinny, huh? Vaguely, barely, but vaguely, yes. barely, uh huh, uh huh. Uh, so, so I was a noise kinny for about maybe two weeks, and then I was a clear kinny for the rest of my uh, for two weeks, huh? Uh huh. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm so uh, you know, for for chat's benefit. Oh God. For uh, for two weeks, huh? Mm-hmm. For t for two weeks. Yep. Yeah, I don't. Don't know about for two weeks, Mortis. <laughs> I'm seeing uh, seeing some influence, you know. Well, okay. Just Listen, uh, all of dramatical murder influenced myself, my style, and my art style in some way, shape, or form. You know. Um, it just you know, it's just, I'm just saying. Also, <laughs> the type of punk I am is influenced heavily from the music bands that I like, not the fucking piss baby shit that noise is. Hold on. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just saying. I just really like Sting. Fuck off. <laughs> okay.
Whose Jet Set Future what? Radio OC is this? <laughs> I have some bad news for you. They all look like that. They all look like that, yeah. Wait. Oh my god. I'm surprised you haven't called out Tar you I'm surprised ah. you've not looked at uh Kojaku no, that's from and the world into view, Tashi. If I ever saw it. <laughs> oh yeah, a little bit. <laughs> oh yeah, no. Oh, yeah, because god. Kojaku and Tashi look nothing alike! No, but the next thing that Kojaku has was very The oh, reason that, why yeah. Tashi has yeah, Tashi has his neck guard, so does Kojaku. Our hang on, let me show you our boy. That was a direct dramatical murder reference. Let me show you our boy, the right one, the good, the good answer. Mm -hmm. The correct answer. Yeah, there, there is a right answer, and the answer is Kojaku. It's always Kojaku. Well, because everyone, the, the bit that we keep that we keep leaning on, because it's the only right bit, is the fact that in every other, uh, in every other bad ending. Uh, the love interest is mean to you. Mm -hmm. Not even in Kojaku's bad ending is he mean to you. No, never. Because he would never. He would never. He's too sweet for that. He is in fact baby. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he's, he's the love of my life. And Y will become apparent the moment you lay eyes on him. Oh, yeah. Uh, because I'm... Uh, what we in the industry like to call predictable. <laughs> yep. I will say, there is something very appealing about men who sometimes uh, lose control around you. That's all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 A little bit. Mm-hmm. You know, just, just, so just once again, just circling back to the topic of me and werewolves. <laughs> <laughs> That's a different font, Morde. I just, I, listen, I've, I've said before, and I'll say again, if you can find, if, if you want to distill down the, the exact formula for Heaton's, Heaton's taste in men. It's Kojaku. It's Kojaku. Like, this is it. It's, yeah. No, like, dude, all of the. Same. Like, if, same. if you were to look at literally, like, everything. Everything about like my taste in guys, it's it's Kojaku. It's wee more to stay to like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> I have a theory, Gigi. Fucking he is he is he is buff. He is a little bit older. He is the kind big brother archetype. He has the gap moe in that he's very Charming and cool and smart and well put together, except the fact that he's a big, sweet, romantic baby who gets all mm -hmm. soft and squishy around the people that he likes. He is has a samurai. He has a samurai yeah. aesthetic. He has tattoos. He has cool scars. He has a cool, great weapon. It's just all of it. It's all of it. Fuck like a monster truck. He also sometimes loses control around Alba. A little bit. Mm -hmm. And then he gets so flustered and sweet and uh, that the first time that they have uh, sex in the good ending, uh, he gets a nosebleed because he's just because he's just so into it. Oh um, no no no! That that's a thing that he does with like, yeah 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 yeah. No, I remember that. Oh god, fuck! Hang on, I'm showing god, the I'm showing the the image from the good ending. Hang on. This, that's not the only time that he's gotten a nosebleed either. This is the, like he did a couple times throughout Alba's route. Look at look at them. They're so sweet. He's. I love him, Your Honor, <laughs> the perfect man. Yeah, God. Oh my God. It's so. Look like, how fucking big his hands are. <laughs> his hands are fucking massive. Yeah. Um. So I've not really explored like dramatical murder since I like fell out of that hyperfixation in 2014. Yeah. Mhm. Mm um so it's interesting like coming back to it nearly a decade later and 
looking at like some of these characters and realizing, oh no, wait, this had a huge impact on the things that I liked when I was younger. <laughs> Hold on, because I knew that it had a huge impact on like my art and stuff, but oh my god, hello. The chemicals were altered and then never unaltered. Something autistic just happened here. <laughs> Oh, goodness. Fucking Jesus. I'm not wrong. You're not, oh, but no. I get it. I was luckily <laughs> old enough that it didn't alter my brain chemistry too heavily. Mm. Uh, I was already yeah. here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, God. I should not have been into Dramatical Murder when I was 14. But, no. You know. The internet be interneting. Here well, we yeah, are. I was I was talking to Lyo about this where we were commiserating about the old days and about the kids now. And I was like, yeah, you remember I was like, you remember it the was um, already old dayless now Shut the fuck up. Uh <laughs> I was like, yeah. I was like, you and I had very different experiences. And he goes, What do you mean? And I'm like, Well, cause I was a I was a Fujoshi. He goes, what? And I'm like, okay, I need you to know. Old man didn't know? No. Oh, God. Well, because he's an old man. Yeah. He's ten years older than us and a guy, so he didn't know. True, 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 true. So I was like, so when you were, I said, so when you were in the yaoi scene and you were my age, you took what you could get. It's why mm. all of us, if you have a conversation with anyone who was a Fujo in those, like, mid-2000s, we all watched the same anime. Yeah. Um, we've all seen Okane Ganai. We've all seen Gravitation. We've all seen Sensitive Pornograph. We've all seen, uh, fucking, uh, I almost said Sayuki. That's not right. We've all seen, mm. um, you know what so, I mean? Like, we've, we've, yeah. like, the, the pool is, oh, we've all seen Junja Romantica. We've, like... So, so, it's either you've seen it, or you've seen clips of it from YouTube, and used to watch that obsessively. Right. And you also watch the old, like, 80s, 90s stuff that was free on YouTube, that people mm -hmm. just uploaded full episodes of. Right. So you were, you were in the... So you, you knew, right? And mm -hmm. Dramatical Murder was one of those things... It's why uh, fucking Mortis and I were clowning on this, this girl on TikTok... Who was like, oh, do you, you all remember, like, accidentally finding dramatical murder when you were... And I'm like, bitch, you didn't accidentally no, find shit. No. There was a there was a Tumblr blog you, that we you all... accidentally find... Okay, hold on. No, no, no. Because there's some buildup that we need to establish here. You accidentally find fan art or pictures of dramatical murder. You don't accidentally download dramatical murder. That's not something you do. That's not possible. No. You had the fucking... You had My to computer. you had to you had to change your computer's location to being in Japan. Mm -hmm. Uh you had to oh God, you had to there was a bunch of like technical computer shit you had to do because you had to follow you had a to, guide. Like, change the locale. You had to download a specific program that was like Japan exclusively. Fucking you had to download the fucking Matrix. You had to download you, the like the fucking English port. Mm -hmm. Like you had to, like you, you had, had to, to jump through so many, many hoops, hoops, and it was so easy to fuck up those hoops. And I fucked up those hoops so fucking bad. I was only able to get reconnect to work on my computer. Um, my oldest computer oh my was stuck in Japanese for the rest of the time that I had it, and I <gasps> never figured out how to go back. <gasps> You only played Reconnect. <laughs> I've owned. I didn't even finish it. I don't even remember it. I'm so sorry. <laughs> d n no, no, because people would upload the clips from Dramatical Murder onto YouTube. But no, YouTube was a very different platform back then. For those, well, for those of you who remember, uh, the it's the reason why. That's a big deal of like, oh, I only played Reconnect. So Reconnect was the the second game, air quotes, mm -hmm. was the DLC, basically. Yep. Uh, and it was the the endings, but extended. Mm -hmm. 
both the good ones and the bad ones. And tripping virus is ending. Don't fucking talk to me about that one. Yeah. I'm still in bed. Fuck. How do you feel about snakes? <laughs> Unre unrelated, how do you feel about snakes and butt chugging? No. <laughs> oh. It's fine! I, so he would have just died of alcohol poisoning. It's fine! Hey, so you know that fun, funky, fresh thing where, like, I built the back rooms under the houses in the old Minecraft server? Mm hmm. Um. I. So I had another friend that I was super close to who was also into dramatical murder. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, uh, as a fun, funky joke, I would build, like, the rooms from reconnect on this create like hidden under builds in this re uh this creative server that we used to play in um and that room was one of the ones that i built way back you're a monster i'm a monster i know but it was funny at the time why would you do that it was funny at the time if you do that to me our friendship is fucking over if you I drop mean, I, not for dramatical murder. No. If you drop like, me in the if you drop me in the snake fucker's room, we're we're done. We're done professionally. No, not not the snake fucker's room. Um Maybe the back rooms again. I don't the know. The back rooms was funny. I love the that. The back rooms was funny. I love that like, clip. Listen, I I will do it if it's funny. Mm-hmm. That's it. That's oh yeah. Honestly, if it's funny and chaotic, then I'll probably do it. That's the way I operate. It's true. Because uh, I'm nothing if I'm not funny. <laughs> no. <laughs> Fucking. I've talked about this before. Is uh, Mortis's shit post game is on a whole nother level. Oh yeah. Uh, and to to kind of wrangle back to the original topic. Um. Mm. Uh, do you think your autism made you funny? <laughs> Yes. 100%. <laughs> Without a doubt. If 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 not for autism, I would not have built the back rooms under our houses because it would be funny. If not for autism, I wouldn't have built multiple scenes from Dramatical Murder, the rooms that they took place in, the room where it happened, if you will, uh, under builds on my other friend's creative server. Okay. If not for my autism, I would not be making a video to raise up Crafty's wife. Like, <laughs> I, like, fucking, the Yippie War. I, if I were not autistic, the Yippie War would not be an inside joke in our streams. <laughs> I, Like, I- oh my god, my autism absolutely had some impact on my humour. Cause, like, so my humour was always, like, weird, but also kind of snippy. Um, especially in, like, high school and middle school and stuff. But, um, the other thing that, like, my autism- again, so how you said, uh, your autism, you'll repeat things if they're funny. Mm -hmm. Uh, I quote shit all the fucking time. Mm-hmm. Especially if it's funny. Like, constantly. So, yeah. <laughs> no, 100%. I'm if going I... back! I'm going- hang on! I'm going back through- uh, so, for those of you who don't know, uh, Mortis, our dearest, dearest, mm. beautiful Hi, boy, Mortis, hello. uh, he's, uh, he's something of an artist. I am. Oh god, what did you find? <laughs> I'm just looking at some of our ship posts, some of the ship posts oh from Curse of Strahd. Fucking, if, if not for my autism, I would not be spamming you at three in the fucking morning with funny rants about Skyrim. <laughs> I'm just, hang on, I'm just scrolling yeah. through our fucking Curse of Strahd chat and grabbing all of the funny memes that... Mortis is drawn. It's something I'm very good at. Oh, <laughs> I goodness, forgot! But... I forgot about the origin of the fucking Upsetty Amalia. <laughs> so, yeah. um... 
I can oh, hang on. If you want to put one on the screen and all oh, explain I'm... the context behind it. Oh, I'm. Hang on. I've. I've. Yeah. Oh, I've got you, BB. Yes. Perfect. <laughs> so, uh. So here's our, uh. <laughs> So here's some of the, um, some of the fucking memes from our Christmas straw chat. Um, so for a bit of context for this one. Hang on, let me um, just, I'll just share my, so you can yeah, see. Yeah, go for it. There we go. Uh, <laughs> oh, I had your stream open, but yeah, so the context for this one. Um, this is my character, Amalia. Um, my Amalia wife! My life. Yeah, no, this is Ulrich's wife. Um, Amolia, Ben decided, looked uh, very similar to some of the art of Tatiana. And so Ben was like, hmm. I've connected the dots. So Amolia's getting tatiana in uh, Curse of Strahd. And I drew Amolia very visibly upset with a sweater that says, I am not Tatiana. <laughs> Uh, continuing forth. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this was, um, we had just gone to a church and, um, it was where the, uh, the angel guy was who lost his wings and he had made a corpse wife for Strauds, uh, to get his <laughs> wings back. Uh, <laughs> And so we all, like, Strahd had came in and we all hid behind a curtain. And I'm not sure who failed the save, but he found us and used calm emotions and invited us to the table. And I don't remember what it was exactly, but I remember uh, Strahd had, like, sniffed the air and it was like, you two have been intimate, with, like, a smile. And I remember being so, like, oh, what the fuck? So it was this, it. so it was this image. Followed by mm -hmm. this one. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right, <and> Amalia. <laughs> Followed by great sin. <laughs> it was like everyone's reaction to it. It was Ulrich, Amalia, Sasha, and then great sin. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this one was the, uh, one of all you got turned into a vampire. Yeah. Oh god, I can't read what that one says. Hold I can't on. feel my skin. <laughs> I can't feel my skin. And then everyone else's reaction to it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fucking, fucking Sasha is so good. <laughs> so concerned. <laughs> Fucking Ulrich and just Esmeralda's just sitting there taking notes. <laughs> oh, the the faces are the best. This is Mortis's oh, it's, like it's special my... skill. <laughs> Especially when it comes to like little shit post drawings like this. Yeah. <laughs> Frank? I, what I think so, name? yeah. What was his name? I God think it damn. was Frank. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking... Truly, like... Listen, Mortis is wonderful. Mortis is a gift, but, like... The gift that keeps on giving are Mortis's fucking ship <laughs> bad because i don't fully remember the um the context of this one I, if like oh i do this was um uh, when amalia was trying to convince Alric to go with them yeah 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 yeah. Okay. she made the big puppy dog eyes at him so he wouldn't stay behind yeah i think i colored this one in too you did hey guys yeah. <laughs> uh wait the last image why did one of them look like shaggy because it was supposed to be like the D and D party is like Scooby Doo characters. 
like John in the style of Scooby Doo and Grayson was shaggy. <laughs> yeah, there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she, she's so little. She's so small. <laughs> She's five foot four, but Ulrich is the size of a tree. <laughs> She's five four, Ulrich's six seven, I think I said. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, that sounds about right. Oh, also, uh, we're gonna skirt past the this one's TOS, I promise. Uh, uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> the bulging, uh, the bulging steeple. The bulging steeple. <laughs> We lost it for like five whole minutes. Most of the session, yeah. We just we kept making jokes and kept giggling, and Ben was losing his mind. Cause Ben, so the book for some reason describes like the church we're at as having like a it's a bulging church. A bulging steeple was the word. A bulging steeple, and I think it was like ah yes. The d oh my god, I, I can't even remember what it was now. Fuck. Um. But it was like, ah, yes. Not the. I don't even remember. Fuck. But I thought it would be funny to just draw the steeple bulging. Like a penis. Like a pianos. The turgid steeple. Yeah. The fucking rock hard staple. I fucking hate it here. <laughs> <laughs> fucking Mortis is so good. Some fucking your shit posts bring me such joy, such dopamine. Just, I'm I'm so glad. Cause sometimes I feel like they're not funny enough, but if they are, then that's perfect. That's they're wonderful. always Amazing. they're always funny enough. God, I'm so glad. There never Can I ever show you the time I drew the uh, the Dragon Age characters as Lion King characters? No. Oh god, that's something for after stream, I think. Because <laughs> that's how long it's gonna take me. Not unless I have like. <laughs> and so it wasn't like it I specifically the, the artwork of Dio dying in the glue trap. <laughs> Oh, okay, no, I found it. So it's it's not like Dragon Age characters, it's just Logan from Dragon Age. As a lion? As a lion, yeah. Cause his face is like super easy to translate into a fucking There you are. No, in a glue trap, like a G. Like that. <laughs> mm-hmm. I have to draw. <laughs> <laughs> I have to draw Mortis dying in a glue trap now. Fuck. You do. Oh, that's another good one, yeah. <laughs> Holding on to my knees. I I use that one specifically whenever I want to ask you to do things. Like <laughs> uh i.e. finishing Daredevil. Wink, wonk, nudge, nudge. We have one episode left. We have one episode left, yeah. D wait. Was it one episode or two? No, it's one. We haven't gotten because we haven't gotten to the church yet. Oh, I found- I have to add this one to the fan art folder. Hey, hey yo. <laughs> oh, yes. In conjunction with my favorite meme I've ever made of you ever. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'm scrolling past all of the, like, actually good artwork because I'm trying to find your <laughs> shit posts. <laughs> His fucking shit pose. There's. Oh god. Wait. Listen. Where me? I mean, I can wait for you. Are you? Oh, by the way, I just wanted to let you know since I kind of keep forgetting about it. Um, I do still have that post of yours saved where you said, oh, if Heaton were an animal, Heaton would be a, a Barozi dog. A Borzoi, uh, yeah. A Borzoi, yeah. Uh, <laughs> if I was a if I was a dog, I think I'd be a borzoi. Yeah, because I wanted to draw that. 
he went for you. you. But he, so just as a heads up, that's happening eventually. And it's not um, purely, it's not purely for the meme. It's just also when I look at Borzois, I'm like, yeah, that possesses the weird, like, long eldritch vibes that Heaton has, I think. Yeah. No, true, 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 true. But I'm also for <laughs> the meme. I forgot about this conversation, fuck. Uh-oh, what's up? I was talking about how um, drawing or- Artorius without his coat is hard. Because uh-huh. uh, I keep making him a little too feminine, despite be- because I'm having a hard time drawing him like as skinny as he would be. Yeah. I said he's tough because he's short, he's very skinny, he has hollow prosthetic legs, his gaunt face. Uh, and I drew, uh, I drew this, which I didn't like because it was too feminine. Part of it was the posing, mm-hmm. I think. But I was like, it's it's too feminine. I don't like it. <laughs> And then this motherfucker responds with, uh, built like. What? (laughs) And I stand by it. I think I'm right. I think I'm correct. I think that's the vibe. I mean, Artorius is built like a wet cat. That is true. I love this one too. Oh god. <laughs> yeah. That one's one of my favorites. I just have to use it more, goodness. Oh no, I turned you off, not the I banished him to the I'm back rooms. I'm here. Hello. That being back rooms, it was awful. That being said, I think I, I think that's the stream. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um Oh this is fun. Thank you for having me on. I'm so sorry it got like so derailed from the conversation. <laughs> no, that's. But I feel like us derailing like this is proof further that we're fucking autistic. Well, that's that's what I've been saying. Is that the uh, the first half, like the first hour, is meant to be like the serious conversation, and then the second yeah. half is we talk about your hyperfixation, and then we just be autistic at each other. Yeah, and here we are. Um, it, are... this was this was super fun. Thank you for having me on. You're very welcome. Oh, Thank goodness. you for coming. Yeah. I think, uh, given conversations we've been having today, we're going to send you over to our Lord Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. God knows we fucking need it. Yeah, we're Goodness. gonna... Uh, after all of this conversation about dramatical murder and, uh, all of the... Axes. And, and Skyrim and, and Skyrim and all of the crimes uncomfortable that we, daddy kinks. We're gonna send you over. We're gonna cleanse your palates and we're gonna send you to. Uh, we're gonna send you to Jesus. <laughs> but express ship you directly to Jesus. So God, go, yeah. go be nice. I'll see you tomorrow hey, for a lore you. stream. Goodbye. And you can catch me tonight. Bye. Yeah. <laughs>